really the 2030 goals, we know how to do that. We know how to get 70% renewables. We can use wind, we can use solar, we can use storage. It's just a matter of the economics of how much investment you need to make to get that level of achievement. We believe, and I think the economics have demonstrated, the markets are the most cost-effective way to get that investment in New York. So it's really about just getting those developer dollars, attracting that private investment. The market signals that we've established are the best way to do that in a cost-effective way. So we're very, very confident that using the markets, we can get there. We've just got to design the products appropriately and properly so that investment comes in. Um, when you start thinking about that private investment, it's really about risk. It's about risk to consumers. Uh, when you write a contract, a long-term contract, uh, and the rate payer is the counterparty to that contract because of the way the subsidies are structured, all of the risk of the future economic environment sits with those rate payers. When you use a market signal, the risk then falls on the developers in that private capital. And we think that protects consumers. We think that that will attract investment faster, and we think that that will ultimately get us closer to our goals in the most cost-effective way. When you start thinking about what 2040 looks like and a carbon-free electric system, we just don't have the technology today on this system to be able to do that. There are days the wind doesn't blow, there's times the sun doesn't shine when you want it to, and you still need to be able to meet that consumer demand. So you've got to have that dispatchable, that reliable dispatchable resource, which today is a, a carbon-emitting gas turbine, and tomorrow, uh, needs to be some new innovative technology that has the same attributes that still performs in the same way as the gas turbine does. And it's that innovation that's going to be important to be able to get us to reliably to meet those goals in 2040. So some of the newest market rules uh, incentivize energy storage. Uh, energy storage resource rules that allows batteries to participate in our markets, participate in our capacity market and our energy markets, and that provides that investment signal to spur the kind of development that we're going to need to attract those resources. And, and they can make money today in our markets and provide a very, very valuable service. Uh, some of the other market changes which we're focusing on is fine-tuning that signal in the energy and the ancillary service markets that performs those resources that can respond quickly to times when the intermittent resources uh, disappear, that can um, react uh, to changing market conditions, provide that valuable service um, that, uh, that you need, that valuable responsive um, fast starting, fast ramping service that you need to complement the intermittent resources. And we're putting those signals into our energy and ancillary service markets so that we can attract that right kind of performance, that right kind of uh, resource additions to our system. Reliability and markets are very complementary, especially the way that we've designed it here in New York. Reliability is job one. We've got to have the resources. Uh, we've got to have enough of the resources and enough of the right kind of resources located in the right spots so that we can be ready for any kind of changing conditions on the grid and know that we've got those resources there. The, the trick is how do you get the right kind of resources and how do you get them located in the right spots? And a lot, the markets and the locational nature of the market signals is very well designed to make sure that we've got the right investment at the right location. So when we need that reliability, when we need that reliable uh, service, uh, we know it's in the right spot and we, and we can count on it. So when you, when you think about what the market rules that you need to have in place, you got to think that you're, you're designing market rules to attract investment to meet reliability. And you've got to be able to price that service so that it most values those resources that contribute more to reliability. Because at the end of the day, it's all about serving the consumer and making sure you've got the right resources available when you need it. In New York State, we've got some of the most stringent reliability rules in the country, and that's by design. Uh, with recognition that New York City is one of the most important, if not the most important city in our country. Having reliability rules that ensure service and access, uh, that having reliability rules that ensure that we've got a reliable service to New York City underlies everything that we do and how we've structured our markets. So we've got some of the most conservative sets of criteria when we design our markets for, say, resource adequacy. So making sure that we've got enough resources at the right time with a reserve margin. Uh, making sure that the units that participate in those markets perform adequately. Um, they're subject to audit. They can test. We've got processes to make sure that they respond uh, when they need them according to the commitment that they signed up for in the capacity market. That's a very conservative set of rules that just sets the table before we even get into the operating day. Uh, we've also got good uh, operating uh, agreements with our neighbors in terms of helping each other out. Um, 
on all of our borders. We don't overly rely on access to imports from other regions, but we're prepared to tap into that if it's something that we need. So when you start thinking about the way our markets are set up to establish the right resources in the first place, when you start thinking about the operating agreements we have with our neighbors, and then when you start thinking about how these markets are designed to pay for and incentivize the right kind of performance and behavior exactly when you need it on that hot summer day, it just sets us up um, it just sets us up very reliably going into uh, any kind of peak operating conditions. And it starts way down the road in planning. We start planning for this years in advance when we start thinking about what's, what's changing on the system, what's going on um, with resources entering and exiting, what type of infrastructure additions do we have in place. Uh, we start planning for what that hot day is going to be like years in advance so that when situations present themselves, uh, we know we're going to have the right kind of system tools in place to, uh, to be able to, to meet expectations for the state and for consumers.